Good morning. Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021. Yesterday, September 30th, was the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And I've shared this before, the name is very important. Because we must have truth first in order to be able to have reconciliation. And so often in so many different areas of life and in so many different periods in history, there is an attempt for reconciliation without first establishing the truth and it never works. So this order is extremely important in terms of addressing the terrible injustices that have occurred towards indigenous peoples of Canada have occurred and still occur that need to be correct, recognized, acknowledged, and corrected. This day is particularly important for Jews to commemorate and take note of and to seriously engage with First of all, because of the many parallels in our experience, in our history, the tragic occurrence of unmarked graves in Canada on the grounds of residential schools, certainly in the Holocaust and in other periods in Jewish history, is a shared trauma that we should relate to with sensitivity and empathy. Children separated from parents, families torn apart, being seen as a group that is less than human and therefore not deserving of the treatment accorded to other groups. Attempts to remove the unique features of culture and religion and perhaps the most important first step, which also we share, is to listen. To listen to stories of the survivors. To hear firsthand what happened, what is happening, and how to be able to improve the situation. Beyond the experiences and histories that we share with indigenous peoples, our Torah portion at the very beginning of the Torah, Bereshis, provides the framework for how we should approach this important subject. I've shared with some of you before the famous line of our rabbis, of Rabbi Akiva, the famous line, Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, love your fellow as yourself, Ze'klal gadol batora. This is the great, grand, fundamental, organizational principle of the entire Torah. Everything else is based on loving your fellow as you love yourself. And I've shared with you before that there are other opinions on what is that one foundational, organizational principle of the entire Torah. And another opinion is from our Parsha, the portion of Bereshis. By Yomer Elohim, and God said, Nase Adam Bitzal Menu, let us make man in our image. By Yivra Elohim Esa Adam Bitzalmo, God created man, Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, but Salmo in God's image, but Selem Elohim Bara Oso, in the image of God, He created them. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean that every single human being descended from Adam and Eve is created, but Selem Elohim in the image of God? It can't mean that we all look like God. Because God has no physical appearance. It certainly does not mean that we all act like God. Because clearly, there are many people who act quite contrary to God's model 
and to what God teaches? So there are many, many opinions among our classic commentators to try to understand this concept of Tzelem Elohim being created in God's image. Let me share with you four. And these four, in my opinion, are representative of many of the different opinions that exist. But let's keep in mind as we review these opinions that they are describing what is a klal gadol, the great fundamental principle. I would argue this is one of the greatest gifts that Judaism has gifted to the world, the idea that every single human being is created B'Tzel HaMelechim. The Malbim, one of our great commentators, says, what does it mean to be created B'Tzel HaMelechim? V'hu Kli Yakar. Every person, every man, every woman, every child is a Kli Yakar, a precious vessel, something that is dear and cherished by his or her creator, by God. The Nitziv, another one of our great commentators from the mid and late 1800s, says, Zeo Tselem Elokim HaMasavvo Umegin Alav Minezek. Tselem Elokim is related, Tselem related to the word Tsel, shadow, meaning that every human being is surrounded by God's protective shadow. There is an element of God hovering over, connected to every single human being. Rabbi Meir Simcha Dvinsk, who wrote the classic commentary Meshachachma, explains that Selem Elakim means Habachira Hachovshis, the ability of a human being to choose freely without necessarily being determined by their origin or upbringing, exclusively though, choosing through their will and their own reason. Lastly, the Sifri. God placed within every single human being the will and the ability to change and improve to become God-like, to act morally like God. Now, as a klal gadol, as a grand single fundamental principle on which all of the Torah is based, it needs to be part of our behavior, part of our outlook every day. You know, we talk about living with the parsha. Each week we read one portion of the Torah. And that week, we should be thinking about the ideas of that parsha. That's the idea behind having a weekly class in the Torah portion. And the idea is that the themes and the guidelines and the commandments that are in that parsha need to be part of our outlook. Transformative in how we see the world, how we see ourselves, and in how we act. And I think that it is entirely fitting that this week we think about Tselem Elohim, and in particular these explanations of what it means, in terms of how we have fallen short towards our indigenous brothers and sisters here in Canada and in other places, and what we can do about it. Do we really look at every single human being, man, woman, and child, as being cherished by God 
And if they are cherished by God, they need to be cherished by us for who they are, not who we want to make them into. To say of every human being that they are connected to God, that God is looking out for them. Well, then how does God feel when one of us mistreats one of his children? To say that every human being has the ability to choose between right and wrong, to choose the life that they want to live. So how can we impose an outside alien constraint on another people or on another person? And finally, that every single human being has the ability to choose to be better, to be more godlike, to change and to improve. And we need to see that within ourselves and we need to see that within every single human being. Tzelem Elohim, to look at every human being as created in the image of God as our classic commentators have understood it is a map for us to follow in terms of how we look at and how we treat people that are very different from us, may have different upbringing, different values, different appearance, different language, different ideas. And yet we have to recognize that we are all God's children and we are all entitled to dignity and we are all entitled to respect. Let's work on that this Shabbos and beyond. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a wonderful Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.